ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله واحسن الهدي هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل دلاله في النار ثم اما بعد all praise is due to allah we lord him beseech his help and in him we seek forgiveness and we seek the refuge of allah from the mischievousness of our souls and the wrong doings of all of our actions whomever allah guides no one will be able to lead him astray and whoever allah leads to be left astray no one will be able to guide him and i publicly bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship as a deity except allah he's alone he has no partners and i bear witness that prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam is his messenger o you who believe fear allah with the fear that is due to him and do not die except as muslim o humanity fear your lord who created you from one soul and from that one soul is made and from the two of them countless men and women spread abroad in multitude remember the wombs that bore you and keep the relations of family ties among you for surely allah is a watcher over you o you who believe fear allah and say that which is correct Allah will repair your deeds for you and forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, they have achieved the greatest of successes in this life and the next. As to what proceeds, surely the best speech is the book of Allah, Al-Qur'an Al-Majid. And the best guidance is the sunnah of our beloved prophet, Abu Qasim, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And the worst of all affairs in this noble deen of Al-Islam are newly invented matters, muhdathat. For every muhdathat or newly invented matter is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah or innovation is a going astray. And every astray is in the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, Alif Lam Mim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبَ Alif Lam Mim, these letters of which only Allah knows the meaning of and no human being, Shaykh, Mullah, Mufti, Alam, Angel, Jinn, no one knows the meaning of these letters, Alif, Lam, Mim, or the letters that are like them, like Taha, Yasin, Qaf, Noon, and the like. This is the book of which in it there is no doubt. It is a guide for those who have taqwa, those who believe in the ghaib, and the ghaib are those things that are hidden from our view. Not necessarily unseen, but those things that are hidden from our view. It is a part of our iman that we believe in those things that are hidden from our view. And if it were not for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being graced by Allah azza wa jal, who sent down the Qur'an to him, to teach us the Qur'an and guide us by the Qur'an and inform us of those things that were hidden from our view, we would have not known that there was interrogation in the grave. We would have not known that there is Munkar and Nakir who ask those questions to angels or that there is punishment in the grave of which we should seek the refuge of Allah from every day in our prayers before the Taslim. We would have not known about the Sarat, the bridge, which is over the hellfire, extending into insha'Allah and leading that person into Jannah, that people will be walking over quickly, some will be going over the speed of light, some that will be going over the speed of wind, some like galloping horses, some running, some crawling. 
we would have not known about the mizan, the scale of which our deeds will be put on. We would have not known about the angels themselves, and we would have not known about the jinn. And among those things that Allah created are the jinn. And unfortunately to many Muslims, upon many Muslims, is that they take the reality of the jinn, which is part of our belief in the angels. Because we say that we believe in six pillars of Iman. We believe in Allah, and the angels, and the books, and the messengers, and the divine decree, the good and evil of it, and the resurrection after the death. As a part of our belief in the angels, connected to the belief in the angels, is the belief in that creature that Allah created from fire, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created from smokeless wind, that creature called shaitan and his junood, his jinn. And from among those jinn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has both believer and disbeliever. It is unfortunate upon some Muslim who deny the existence of the jinn. And it is also unfortunate upon some Muslim who don't deny the existence of the jinn, but they make ta'weer or they make tahrif by giving the jinn another meaning other than what Allah called it in the Qur'an or what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he explained what is the jinn. The jinn is not a human being. The jinn is not microorganism. They're not micro. The jinn is not an individual who has weak ideas, wrong thinking and lies. The jinn is a creature that Allah created and if the Muslim doesn't believe in the existence of the jinn, or they change the meaning of the jinn to something other than what Allah intended, and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam intended, then they might be setting themselves up for that creature that can't be seen and is hidden from our view. They might be setting themselves up to be possessed or be touched by that creature, the evil from those creatures the evil called the jinn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also revealed in his book and has also commissioned his prophet through wahi, through revelation, to inform us another part of the world that can't be seen except for the physical effects of it. And that part of the world that is unseen or hidden from our view is magic. And those Muslims who deny the existence of magic and deny the existence of sorcery and witchcraft, they are also setting themselves up to be touched by the shaitan from among the jinn and or the men. And they are also setting themselves up to be affected by that sihr that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in his Qur'an in many places in the Qur'an that even the Messenger of Allah himself, the Messenger of Allah Al-Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was touched by for those people who have a denial and a rejection and a repudiation of this existence of jinn and magic, the Messenger of Allah himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was touched by it when the man, the Yahud, the Yahudi, Lubayd ibn al-A'sam, he got the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam servant, or someone who was able to go into his house, we should say, to take the comb of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and remove some of the hair from that comb, and make incantations on the hair, of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by tying eleven knots into intertwining that hair into eleven knots in a rope and throwing it in a well trying to hide it as though Allah couldn't see it as though Allah didn't know it which caused the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam to be marbut it caused the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the one that was able to go to all nine of his wives 
and be intimate with them in one night, it caused the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to not be able to go to his wives the way he normally did in the past. And it caused the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's vision to be blurry. And it caused his stomach to be a little upset and queasy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those Muslims, may Allah guide you and all of us who deny the existence of these realities, these things that are hidden from our view, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed those two surahs in the Qur'an. At the end of the Qur'an, the 113th surah and the 114th surah, Al-Falaq wa'l-Nas, in that occasion, according to many of the Mufassirun, the scholars of Tafsir of the Qur'an, and according to one narration, collected by Imam Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Ali ibn Abi Talibin radiallahu ta'ala anhu to that well, of which the Prophet was apprised of alayhi salam by way of revelation, and no one would have known that that rope was in that well unless Allah revealed it to them, and only Allah reveals to messengers and prophets. So he sent Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu to that well on the outskirts of Al-Madina and Nabawiya. And he retrieved that rope and brought it back to the Messenger of Allah as this narration records. And when he brought the rope to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, that rope that had 11 knots in it, with the hair of the Messenger of Allah from the comb, that that Jew, may Allah curse them, put on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam blowing in the knots on each time that he tied it with the Prophet's hair. So when the Prophet's companion Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was told what to do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had him recite, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقَ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاسَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدْ and the evil of the blowers in the knots when they blow. وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدْ Five ayat. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَاسَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ إِذَا حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Six ayah. مَلِكِ النَّاسِ Seven ayah. إله الناس eighth ayah من شر الوسواس الخناس ninth ayah الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس and then Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه وارضاه said when I finish reciting those ayat or when the messenger of Allah finished reciting those ayat and I blew on each knot with each ayah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked as though he had been tied up and let loose. He looked as though, as though he was tied up and then he was let loose and he was well. And this hadith is authentically recorded by Al-Bukhari and others insha'Allah ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, as a part of our iman, we have to believe in those things that are hidden. And it is amazing, it is utterly amazing that a Muslim in the so-called new millennium that the Kuffar have us believe has some type of significance, that some Muslims can believe and understand and accept the fact that a person in Asbury Park, New Jersey can go to a machine and send a letter, encrypted or otherwise, to a person on the other side of the planet and it reached there in less than minutes. And a person not believe that a jinn could reach a person in less that time from another place. It is amazing that a Muslim can still believe that people can listen to other people's voices by this machine called telephone and now wireless. Things that you can't see with the naked eye and disbelieve in the jinn or magic. It is incredible that human beings among the Muslims can believe and know for a fact that they can turn on their TVs of which we ask Allah to make them get rid of it 
because that is one of the biggest evils they can have in their home, that they can turn on the TV and live see an event that's happening in China and not believe in the existence of jinn or magic. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this Qur'an as a guidance. And Allah also sent this Qur'an as a mercy. And along with that guidance and that mercy, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu sent down this Qur'an as shifa. He sent down the Qur'an as a healing. The Qur'an is just not a spiritual healing, but it is also a physical healing. And we find in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the time of the Sahaba while he was alive and after he died Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite over people and spit with a spring type of spit called nafas over the people and be healed by the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala blowing over them. And we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has informed us to protect us from those creatures, from those creatures that are hidden from our view, from among the unseen. That when we go to bed, it is important for the Muslim to take the end of his thawb or a towel or something like it and wipe his or her bed every night before they go to bed. To wipe off the bed because you don't know what was in that bed hidden from your view. We're not necessarily talking about crumbs that you ate from the crackers that night. Or a sandwich. This deen goes beyond those things of the physical life. They dwell into the spiritual realm as well. Things that we cannot see. So even if there was nothing that had fallen on your bed that you can't see, you should not reject the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as some people attribute to Imam Malik when they say he said as sunnah kasafinat al-nuh man rakibaha faqad naja wa man takhallaf anha faqad halak that the sunnah is like Noah's ark whoever rides it is saved and receives salvation and whoever abandons it meaning jumps off the boat of the sunnah they will drown and they should drown so the people who reject the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when they pull back their sheets and spreads and they don't see anything on the bed so they don't wipe their bed you are abandoning the ship called the sunnah and you don't know what of the unseen might affect you. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us in other narrations that when you go to bed at night you should make the recitation of ayatul kursi and this is not in Urdu, this is not in Punjabi, this is not in Russian or French or Creole. This is not done in English, this is done in the Arabic language. And you will get no benefit, and Allah knows best, you will get no benefit if you recite these ayat in any language except the Qur'an. Because it is the Qur'an that you get benefit from, not English, not Urdu, not French. Not Bengali, but Arabic. Recite Ayatul Kursi before you go to bed. And in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has informed us that we should recite Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad and Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq and Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas then cup our hands and blow in our hands and wipe as much of our bodies that we can as much of your body that you can reach with your hands after reciting those three floors three times and spitting or blowing with nothing in your hands, this will protect you. Along with Ayatul Kursi will protect you until the morning. Shaitan will not be able to come to you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the muttaqoon, the people who have taqwa. And one of the signs of the people of taqwa are the people who believe in the ghayb. الحمد لله رب العالمين ونصلي ونسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. My beloved brothers and sisters in Iman, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants us to be pleased with those things that He has given us of the good of this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to confer upon his slaves those things of the felicities of this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to mention those things that he has given to us of his ni'mah. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ Allah says in his book, and of those things of ni'mah, of bounty and grace and favors, mention it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alayya. O Allah, I recognize the ni'mah that you've given me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to recognize what he has given us of the good of this life. He wants us to mention it. But for Allah, brothers and sisters in Islam, there's another side to this. And if you are not careful, those things that Allah azza wa jal have blessed you with, if you are not vigil on those things that he has given you of the felicities of this life, it could cause another aspect of this world, of the unseen or things that are hidden from our view, to have an effect on you. And those things are al-hasadu wal-aynu. Al-hasadu wal-aynu. Jealousy and envy and the evil eye. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we have mentioned in the first part of the khutbah, he has informed us to seek refuge with him from the evil of the hasid when he hasid. من شر حاسد إذا hasid. Envy and jealousy is something that will have not only a spiritual effect on you if it is cast upon you by the unknowing or knowing individual, but it is something that can even have a physiological effect on you. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has said, and insha'Allah this hadith is authentic, insha'Allah. Ista'inu ala injahi al-hawa'iji bil-kitman, fa inna kulli di ni'matin mahfood. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if this narration is authentic from him, he said, seek the success of all of your needs, by being silent. Seek the success of all of your needs by being quiet. Meaning, don't tell anybody that you're getting ready to get $400,000. Don't tell anybody or don't tell everybody that you're getting ready to marry so-and-so. Don't tell everybody or anyone that you're getting ready to receive such-and-such -such or you have such-and-such. Because surely everything that has a ni'mah in it is envied by the people. And the first sin that was created in the heavens, the first disobedience in the heavens, was the disobedience and the sin of hasad, of jealousy, of envy. That thing of which a person wished that the other person didn't have. And in some cases it goes beyond that. The person not only wished that that person didn't have it, they wished that they would lose it and it would come to them. This was the first sin in the heaven. And the first sin on earth and all the other sins sprung from that was also jealousy and envy. The two sons of Adam alayhi salatu wassalam wa ala nabiyyina kadalik, one of them that is commonly known as Qabil, had an aversion in jealousy for his brother that is commonly known as Habil, and Allah only knows their true names. So my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, this thing of al-hasad is real. This thing of jealousy and envy is true. And so is the evil eye. And every single person that sends out the evil eye, whether they do it knowingly, and if they do it knowingly, it is worse. Or they do it unknowingly. Every person that sends out or casts the evil eye on someone, it doesn't mean that they were jealous. But every jealous person, that every jealous person that sends out the evil eye, it doesn't mean that he did it maliciously. But know for surety 
that the evil eye is real as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Aynu Haqq. وَلَوْ كَانَ شَيْءٌ سَابِقُ الْقَدْرِ لَسَبَقَتْهُ الْعَيْنِ That the ayn, the evil eye, is real. It is real. It is not allegorical, metaphorical. It is real. And if there were anything that could supersede or cancel out the qadr, the divine decree of Allah, it is the evil eye. Some of the symptoms of the evil eye and some of the symptoms of magic or hasid, and they have some differences, is a person having nightmares all the time. And if a person has nightmares all the time, constantly, this is not only one of the indications of evil eye, but it also might be one of the indications of magic or even jinn possession. Also, when the person has an aversion for listening to the Qur'an, if you find that you don't like to hear the Qur'an, and you turn it off quickly, and you turn on some music, or you turn on something else, then know for a surety you're in trouble. If you dislike hearing the adhan, and you wish that the adhan wasn't being called, then know for a surety you are in trouble, and you might, you might be touched by shaitan. Also one of the signs of magic, or evil eye, or hasid, is that a man acts one way outside of his house with his wife, and then when he goes to his family in the house, he starts mistreating her and acts differently. This is one of the signs of evil eye. Also one of the signs of evil eye is frequent miscarriages from the pregnant woman. Also losing consciousness is one of the signs of magic. Having epileptic fits of which the Prophet salam used to seek refuge with Allah from Junoon. He used to seek refuge with Allah from madness and epilepsy. Also one of the signs of evil eye is that when the person or hasid is that the person starts becoming impotent. They can't go to their wives. When they think about their wives and they're away from them, they have sensuality in themselves. But as soon as they get close to their wives and they try to be intimate, they cannot have an erection. And we need to say it just like this. If this is happening to that person, it's a possibility that that could be the result of evil eye. And the evil eye that was sent down on those people from that other person is something that is usually harbored in the heart of that individual that cast out that evil eye by being jealous of that person, wanting to have what that person has. And even the scholars of Islam, based on the Quran and the Sunnah, they say that a person can give his own wife, or she can give her husband, or even the person can give themselves the evil eye. Constantly looking in the mirror, combing your hair and brushing your hair, making sure those waves are there. Constantly looking at the beautiful beard that Allah has given you. Constantly combing and brushing your hair in the mirror, being concerned, sisters, about the way you look so much so that you give yourself the evil eye. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us believe in the unseen and to make us believe in the things that are hidden from our view. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from a shaitan and his junood, his army, of which we cannot see. And lastly, one of the biggest tricks of shaitan, one of the biggest machinations of Iblis, la'anatullahi alayhi, and we should be careful not to say la'anatullahi alayhi, may Allah curse him, often of the biggest tricks of shaitan, which is an effect of magic, is a man being separated from his wife. فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they learn only from those two individuals, Harut and Marut, that which would separate a man from his wife and the Prophet and the Hadith and Muslim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that shaitan places his throne over water. Shaitan places his throne over water. And in the beginning of the day, he sends out his saraya. He sends out his junood. He sends out his army. And they come back saying, after he asked them, what have you done? 
and the shaitan is answered by them, فَقَدْ فَعَلْتُ كَذَا وَكَذَا I've done this and that. And the shaitan says to them, Iblis says to them, مَا صَنَعْتَ شَيْءٍ You haven't done anything. مَا فَعَلْتَ شَيْءٍ You haven't done anything. Then the others come back and he says, what have you done? And that jinn, that might be from among the human beings also, that jinn comes back and he says to the Iblis, I stuck with so and so and didn't leave so and so until I caused him to be separated from his wife. And then the hadith from the Messenger of Allah, whom we believe that what he said is true with no allegory, because there's no allegory in the Quran. And there's no allegory in the Messenger of Allah's revelation that he received. None. It doesn't exist. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Iblis draws near to that person, that jinn. And he embraces that jinn. And then he says, Ni'ma anta, anta, ni'ma anta. Yes, you're the one. You're the best one. The one that caused separation from a man and his wife. So sisters in Islam and brothers in Islam who get on the phone or send emails or faxes or otherwise whispering to the Muslims in their ears by whatever means of communication Allah has gifted us with. Those of you who cast these arrows, shooting them from your satanic bows into the hearts of other Muslims, which causes them to have suspicion about their husbands or wives, their husbands or wives that didn't necessitate it, then know for a surety that you are of the saraya of a shaitan. And we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from as-sihr, from magic. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from an-nujum, astrology. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from necromancy. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the jinn. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil eye and al-hasid. And we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from you. From you who cause a man and his wife to be separated. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us true followers of the sunnah, believing in every single thing that was revealed. For surely, as the Sahaba used to say and the Tabi'un, that when the Quran was coming down, the sunnah was coming down with it.